Hello and welcome to Codeverse, an online channel where we teach you on how to build websites and also how to code. Here on this channel, we teach you on anything that has to do with tech related contents. So if this is your first time of coming to this channel, please do well to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to always turn on the notification bell so that anytime we bring up new contents, new videos, you'll be the first to view the video. Now we are just starting out with website design and we want to know what is website? What is a website? So you as someone who wants to become a web designer or a web developer you need to ask yourself what is a website so i should be able to know what a website is before i can start developing websites for clients so your client comes to you and tell you they want to build a website you should be able to explain to them what a website is before you can go ahead to start building that website for them so let's head over right now to what a website is and also in this video i'll be showing you some website terms that uh, you need to know as a web developer as a web designer there are some terms there are some jargons that you need to get yourself acquainted with now as we show you this video you also need to make more research because not everything may actually be shown to you right now so you need to make more research to get more of the terms that are actually used in a website design so right now let's head over to what is a website now a website actually it's just like a collection, a storehouse where you have information, where you have data, where you have pages that are linked to one another. And from this portal, you are able to get information about a particular service, about a particular product, about a, comp a particular company, or about a particular organization. You are also able to get information about the government as well that is what a website is a website is also a place where you can go and also interact with other users as well now having know what is a website you would ask yourself okay how then does the website work now for the website to work you need to be connected to the internet then you need to have what you call a browser you need to have a browser now what then is a browser a browser refers to the service you use in order to access the website so your browser could be what google chrome it could be mozilla firefox it could be opera mini it could be safari all these are known as browsers they are softwares that enable you to browse on any website at all so long the website is functional do you get that so right now if you look at my screen you can see now that i am using a software a browser called uh, uh, chrome google chrome so you can also use other browsers just as i've listed now when you come to your browser what you see here on this particular page where i will type the name of the website what you see here is known as the address bar and that is what we have in this place here now address bar what is the address bar the address bar is the place where you type the website that you want to visit so you cannot just come and you just visit a website like that no there are process there are procedures you need to follow you need to get the browser first then you go to the browser and locate the address bar the address bar you can see right now then from here you can be able to type in the website the name of the website that you actually want to visit so that is that that is what the address bar is all about now what then is favicon now in website we all have what to call favicon now look at my browsers i have three tabs that are open currently or about four tabs we have the first one here we have the second then we have the third now each of these tab they have an icon you can see this gmail icon here you can see this one icon here then you can also see this icon here so if i open another website for instance let me open another website you'll be able to see the icon on that website so you can see this icon here right now this is the icon so this icon that you see 
on the address bar on the left side of the address bar is known as what to call favicon favicon is different from the logo the logo of any website this is a logo right now so favicon is different the favicon is what the icon the tiny icon you see on the address bar when you visit any website do you get that so now we have the next one which is content management system also known as shortened as cms cms is like is a software that you come and in the software has already been written out for you the codes are already there for you all you just need to do is to come to that software then make use of that software to start building up your website so do you get that right now so in this case you don't begin to write code from the scratch you don't begin to write code from here and there so the code has already been modified has already been worked upon for you then all you need to do is to manipulate and work on this code that is what cms is all about and wordpress is an example of a cms wordpress i'm sure you must have heard about wordpress wordpress is an example of cms and in the course of our teaching we'll be teaching you on how to build websites using wordpress which happens to be the most popular and the most used cms in the world so and you can also know that most websites about 70 percent of the websites today most of them are built on wordpress now not only wordpress we also have other cms like drupal we also have joomla joomla is a cms we also have magento we also have squarespace squarespace all these are some of the cms that we have so once you come to this cms you master how to use them then you can be able to build your website with them i give you an assignment you take note of it make sure you go ahead and search out for other cms that have not listed in this video now move over to the next one which is domain name now what is a domain name a domain name is a name that leads people to a website so for instance take for instance a friend is coming to visit your house your friend doesn't know your house and that is the first time so what you do is you give your friend the address name the address name so it is with that address name that your friend can be able to locate your house that is what a domain name is in simple terms it's a name that helps you to or leads you to a website where you get information or details about that website that's what a domain name is so look for instance now this is a domain name you can see this now this is a name so once you open any website for instance once you open any website the website that leads you to get information about that website the name there is called the domain name in subsequent videos i'll be showing you the types of domain names that we have and how you can also get a domain name to start building your website now we move over to the next one the next one is called a hosting now a hosting in simple terms a hosting is like a storehouse that stores relevant information about a website so let's take for instance the example i made about your friend coming to visit you so your house is the hosting then the address that you gave to your friend is the domain name so when your friend follows the address which is the domain name it leads him or her to your house which is the hosting so the hosting is a service or a storage center that you pay for you subscribe to it normally you rent it just the same way you rent your apartment when you live so you rent a hosting space that will be able to accommodate all your files about your website so that is what a hosting is now move over to the next one which is url okay before the url please we also know that we have different hosting companies in the world that can give you this hosting services and in the subsequent videos i'll be showing you a whole lot of some of uh, these hosting companies where you can purchase or rent your hosting to start building your website now remember that a website is not complete without the domain name 
the website is not complete without the domain name and it is also not complete without the hosting so the name is important as well as the hosting is also important they work hand in hand because without the name you can be taken to the website and if there is no hosting to host that website then the name cannot lead you to that website so we we'll move to the next one which is the url url stands for uniform resource locator uniform resource locator some persons call it universal resource locator now it is a link it is a link a link a link that takes someone to your website to a website now take for instance look at this website for instance you can see now that the link started from you can see where it started from https then we have this um we have this colon then we have this slash sign here followed by www then the name of the website or the name of the company so this is what we call the url the url universal resource locator so now for instance now if the website is encrypted it shows you this https and i will tell you what encrypted means then if it is not encrypted you have to it will show you just a single http meaning that there is no ssl for that particular website so right now move to the next one which is hyperlink now what is hyperlink hyperlink is like a link that links you from one page that you are to another page now sometimes have you been on whatsapp and somebody sends you a link and that link is sent to you the color changes to either blue now once you click the link it takes you to where you get information about what the link is saying so that is what we call hyperlink now in websites when you visit some websites a link can take you to another link for instance you click on this it takes you to another page just like that you click on this this is a link you can see that now as i hover my mouse on it it shows that this is a link so that is what an hyperlink is all about now move to the next one which is screen resolution now screen resolution refers to the pixel density of your screen so for instance now we have a, a larger screen for instance now this is a large screen then it displays the image in a wide view for you to see then if you have a smaller screen you find out that the image that was previously displayed very wide on a large screen on your own small screen it displays very small and tiny so the more pixel that your uh, your screen has the more wider view you are able to get when browsing a website so take for instance now i am using a small screen for to view a website then by the time i put that website on a very wide or a very large screen like a television for instance a smart tv you find out that the resolution changes from being small it changes to something very very wide then we move to the next one which is https and http it's quite a different thing and hey they all stand they all stand uh, the meaning is hypertext transfer protocol and security that is what https means hypertext transfer protocol and security then why http is hypertext transfer protocol there is no security so for instance now this website has a security it has an a security https and that is why some website you visit it will not it will not show you secured it will not show you this padlock sign it will not show you this padlock sign so as it showed you this padlock sign it signifies that that website is encrypted 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 meaning that it has https and what enables that https is what we call the ssl ssl certificate when you are buying your hosting and your domain you'll be able to get what is ssl certificate do you get that right now so you'll be able to know what is ssl certificate and how you can also be able to purchase 
and how you can be able to purchase that so right now you can see now that this website has https then there are some websites that when you visit them okay let me visit a website for instance now when you visit that those websites they will not be able to load up okay this website is not going so they will not be able to load up with this padlock security it will, it will show you a red signal or a red cross crossing the uh, padlock sign meaning that there is no https for it and that is why the definition or the full meaning is hypertext transfer protocol and security a site that has padlock sign shows that there is https while a site that doesn't show the padlock size shows that it is on http do you get that now and that is being enabled by this ssl certificate ssl stands for secure socket layer or sometimes some people call it secure server layer whichever one so ssl enables your site to have that particular um, encrypted https so when you are building a site for a client you make sure that you also attach the ssl and some hosting providers they give it to you for free for the first year then in subsequent years you renew it just like that now we we'll move to the next one which is back-end development now when you visit a website what you only see is the front page what you only see is the interface the design the test the fonts but you don't really know what users are inside the website or you don't really know what actually interplay inside that particular website or you don't really know how that website actually functions that is where the back-end development comes in so back-end development are for the developers they are the one who actually manipulate the things that happen at the back end do you get that now they are the one who manipulate what happens at the back end and anything that is being manipulated at the back end is bound to take place at the front end for the users to see so this home find jobs employers all these things you see here they were actually done from the back end and it is now being made visible for any users to come and see it so that is what back-end development is all about now we talk about uh, the next one which is the front end the front end is just opposite of the back end development it is actually what you see whether the website is blue or whether it is green or whether it is red whether the website has logo whether it has a um, stylish font and all that that is what the front end is the front end majorly is what the users or the visitors of that website see and the languages you can use to do the front end are mostly html and css used to do the front end then we move to the next one which is called navigation now this have you visited a website and when you visit that website what you see is these pages here all these pages you see here all these ones are known as the navigation the navigation so when you click on any of this navigation menu it takes you to the page for that particular menu so when you are building a website you make sure that you have a well um a well seen or visible navigation so that your visitors will be able to navigate to different pages without stress there are some websites you also visit there are no navigation pages they are just there you begin to struggle and struggle to find about us you struggle to find contact us you struggle to find our services which ought not to be so as a web developer you need to know what the navigation is and how to position them in such a way that visitors can be able to view it and also click on them that is what a navigation is all about then we move to the next one which is above the fold above the fold now when you visit a website for the first time whether you are using a phone or you are using a laptop now the first page that comes up before you start scrolling down that is what we call the above the fold for instance now this is the above the fold of this website the first thing you see before you start scrolling down is what we call above the fold then the opposite of it is below 
the fold so it's just the opposite so by the time you start scrolling down that is what we call below the fold do you get that right now so that is also another term we have another term again which is called the html html stands for hypertext markup language html is a language that is used in web development and web designs and it is a language that you can use to write out style sheets and fonts for instance now take for instance now all these style sheets you see here these colors and the font style that is being used all these are made possible via the use of html then we also have css css is cascading style sheets css has to is a front-end language yeah, and it has to do with the coloring aspects the coloring aspect of the website now for instance now you take a look at this website we have the background here which is blue then for this particular button here it's not clickable we have another background for it so css language has to do with the coloring aspects of it then we'll move to the next one which is called plugins plugins are what um, you, you they, they, they are functionalities that enables a website to function well there are softwares or rather softwares that enables a website to function well and we mostly see plugins when we are using wordpress and that is what we'll be doing from time to time we'll be using wordpress to build websites so plugins are what enables your website to function where they are already developed softwares that you you get them then you work on it you can rewrite them if you want then you work on it and it enables your website to function well for instance now plugins that enable you to go to a website and you fill a form and submit it it is a plugin that enables you to do that you go to a website you click on their contact page and you you you, you make a request it is a plugin that enables you to actually do that do you get that right now you go to a website you see a chat button on that website you begin to chat with the administrators of that website it is a plugin that enables you to do that kind of functionality to move over to the next one which is called php php is hypertext preprocessor or hypertext processor whichever one you want to call it so now this php is a programming language it is a programming language which you can actually learn to start building your website and it is more advanced it is more advanced because you can build different kind of website on php you can build dynamic websites static websites uh, on php and it is very very much advanced we'll move to the next one which is called js js stands for javascript now javascript now let's take for instance now you go to a website and you you are asked to fill a form you you fill a form or ra rather let's say for instance now you visit a website let me visit a website for instance then you want to register on that website then as you are registering on that website you fill in your name fill in your email address and you put in your username then when you submit then the a pop up will now come up and tell you oh this this um, username has been taken or this username you need to put the first letter to be capital letter it is javascript that pops out that notification for you it is javascript that actually pops up that notification for you do you get that right now and i'm sure you must have experienced some things like that we move to the next one which is called database now database of a website is like a storeroom a storeroom that stores the data the information about that website for instance you have people who are registering on your website now what enables those users what enables their details their information to be stored it is the database database is where those details and information about those users are stored we move to the next one which is called taking cake cake file now your browser sometimes we begin to store data we begin to store information for instance you visit a website today your browser stores that information and you register you register your browser picks up that registration you did and store it for you so that next time when you come 
you'll be able to log in without thinking of oh, what is the password and all that because that detail you the information you put your browser was able to store it on your behalf that is what the cake file is all about then we have the next one which is a dns dns stands for domain name system now ordinarily every domain name is backed up by series of digits series of numbers but because we are not able to remember figures easily now look for instance at this website now the back end of it now is a number it has a number which is the domain name system but because we are not able to remember series of digits easily we can only remember names easily that is why the names are being transformed or sorry the the digits are being transformed to the names that you see so every website have their domain name system they have their ip address that is being used or their ip number that is being used now we have the next one which is drop down now drop down is often used in navigation for instance now you visit this website now this is a drop down a drop down men menu means that there are other menu under a top menu under a top menu this is a drop down you can see now this is an icon for drop down you can see that right now that's what the drop down is all about then we have other words which is called the over states now over states allows you to interact with something now you visit a website right now then when you hover for instance hover means putting your mouse on top of an element so i hover my mouse on this you can see the way it changes i hover my mouse on this you can see the way it changes i hover my mouse on on this you can see the color changes i hover my mouse on this the color changes that is what we call hover hovering your mouse or your cursor on an element then we have the next one tap to call tap to call is sometimes you visit a website then you on their contact page you see a phone number then when you click on it this one now doesn't have tap to call when you click on it it prompts your phone to start calling it immediately without you copying the number or typing the number so that is what tap to call functionality does and you can actually do that in your web design and development so as we proceed we'll be looking into most of these uh, stuffs that we have been mentioning then we have geolocation now geolocation is for instance now your browser picks up the location where you are currently and it serves you information related to the location to the zone where you are sometimes some people change their ip address or change their browser locations to another location so that you'll be able to get information related to that location so that is what the geolocation does now there are a whole lot of terms used in web design and if you begin to look into all of them you find out that time will not be on our side but these are actually the key ones that i feel that are essential for you to know now you can make research for other terms that are used in website design and development ask question and i'll be glad to respond to you